love Lois Angler. Someday, I want to be a writer and artist just like her. Feathers for lunch are the greatest birds, and this cat looks so real. Uh oh. Door is left open. Just a crack. My cat is out and won't come back. He's looking for lunch, something new. A spicy treat for today's menu. This food in a can is tame and mild. <laughs> <laughs> so he's gone out for something wild. <laughs> but when his bell jingles, birds call out a loud warning. Big cat got out early this morning, so he keeps prowling, hoping to munch. But all he catches are feathers for lunch. When Lois needed a model for a cat and feathers for lunch, she used her sister's cat, Bucky. The ideas for my books come from things that I know and love. When I was growing up, my mother and father had a vegetable garden. I loved working with them in that garden. We would plant the seeds and sprouts. Then we'd water them and watch them as the sun helped them grow. When the vegetables were ripe, we'd pick them and bring them in to eat. Growing vegetable soup is my way of sharing the joys of having a garden. But even if you can't plant a garden, you can still plant a rainbow. What do you think I mean when I say I'm going to plant a rainbow? You mean that you're going to plant like a garden with a bunch of pretty flowers and they're going to have all the colors of the rainbow on them. Right. Here's a bulb, a real bulb. So this is what I drew my pictures from. And see how the tip is starting to get green? After the bulbs and the seeds grow, they'll turn into flowers. Like Just as pretty one? as those, all different colors. What color is this one? Orange. Orange. How about that one? Red. Oh, you guys are good. What about uh, way in the back? Yellow. See this? Carnations. They kind of look like orange. Yeah, it's sort of a reddish orange, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, see that red one right there yeah. is a carnation. What kind of flower do you have on your face? Oh, I don't know. Tulips. One, two. Oh. <laughs> I grew up in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Everyone in my home always seemed to be making something. My mother liked to sew, so she gave me beautiful cloth scraps. My dad had a basement workshop, and I always had a ready supply of art materials. When I was little, my mom and my dad said that I could have a card table uh, and leave it right downstairs where everybody would see it as they were coming in and out of the house. And I could keep my art materials on it. And when I had time, after school or on weekends, I could go there and I could work. Everybody else might have thought it looked a little messy. But to me, something was happening there. Something artful was happening. The things I collected weren't things other people would collect. They would probably throw them away. But you know, like a foil gum wrapper, how beautiful that is. It would make just a wonderful fish scale or an eye of something or uh, buttons from my mom. It's always picking around, looking for things, and uh, just seeing what I could use to turn something into something else. That was discovered that if she cut shapes out of paper or cloth, she could move them around till she got them just where she wanted them, then glue them down. Cutting and pasting is still Lois's favorite way to make art. She uses it in all her books. Gorgeous apples, wonderful pumpkins. Once I've chosen the subject for a new book, I start looking at it more closely. 
For eating the alphabet, I went to one of my favorite places, the grocery store. I wanted the fruits and vegetables I painted to look so juicy and tempting that you'd want to pick them up and eat them. Every week I would pick out vegetables and fruits that began with one letter of the alphabet. I would study them and then I'd paint them. When I finished those, I'd come back and find fruits and vegetables that began with the next letter. Today is an A day. Brussels sprouts. No, nope. not today. Hmm, nice looking spinach, but not yet. Nice celery. Not on the list. This is what I want. Good. Artichokes are on my list. Asparagus. That's on the list, too. John. Hi, Lois. Which one uh, would you say would be good for eating? Oh, Lois, you look for an avocado when it gets dark in color. Now, I need another one. Oh. For painting. Well, let me show you one here. This is just beautiful in color. Oh, the texture is good. Yeah, that's really good. That wow, look at these apples. This is really, really nice. Oh, that subtle pinkish orange. Just that little touch. It looks like somebody did it with a watercolor. Just wonderful, wonderful apple. But I think these are the ones. These are the ones that I love. Look at the way the color changes. This one, this one here is perfect. This is the one I want. It's got my name on it. Good morning, Lois. Hi, Chris. And I have apples here uh -huh. and asparagus. I wondered when the grocery clerk would notice that each week the strange woman artichoke. was buying only fruits and vegetables that began with one letter of the alphabet. No beans today? No beans today. Now that I have my models, I can't wait to get home and paint. I still have a special place to work. When I'm there, I'm ready to go. I have everything I need within reach. My paints, paper, markers, crayons, rubber cement, even my telephone. Now let's see if I can paint this apple. I'm going to do this in watercolor. Now, I'm never certain how this is going to turn out. Ooh, that's a nice one. Wow. I begin by mixing my colors right on the paper surface. And um, just watching what develops. Uh, I've just let the, uh, the color itself just wander around, always bearing in mind what you are trying to do, which is an apple in this case. So while that paper is drying, I'm going to be sketching. I'm going to be determining what shape, what size I'm going to want to be doing these apples. What I'm going to do next is uh, put a little piece of folded tape on the back of what would be like my pattern. And I'm going to search over this watercolor surface for an area that I think looks uh, similar to that apple in color. I paste the cutout apple on a piece of white paper. Now, the next thing I might want to work on is a stem for the apple. I think I like this one the best. It's because of the color, the way the color flows here from the green to this uh, yellowy, orangey, greenish part, and then the, the brighter red uh, on the bottom here. Somebody else looking at these three might pick this one or this one. Seeing as I'm doing it, I get the choice. 
I'm picking this one. I think I've got an apple that I like. I think I'm going to eat this one. Making a book isn't really that difficult. It's what you put in the book that's hard. To help me figure out what words and pictures I want to put on each page, I sketch the book out in pencil. I try things in different ways until it feels like everything is in the right place. I do this when I'm writing words, too. I try them one way, then another. Sometimes I find out I don't need as many words as I thought. The pictures can tell a lot of the story. One of the books that I've done is called Moles Hill. It's an Indian folk tale set in the state of Wisconsin, where we live. So I tried to use things in the story that relate to the Native Americans who live in this part of the country. I especially like the patterns they made by folding and sewing together brightly colored ribbons. These are the things that really give me ideas about my artwork. Do you like copy the patterns or do you like get them in your head? Well, I don't really copy it, but I record it in my brain, as you probably do every day of your life, you know, if you're creative. You see something and you remember it. I wouldn't take any one of these in particular, but I would really take the idea the look of their beautiful beadwork, for example, and then I would make my own patterns. When did you th first think that you would do Native American books? I've always enjoyed it. Whenever I come to the museum, I always come to this area first and look at all the things. So I guess that might have been one of the things that inspired me, plus a lot of the stories about animals, and I love to illustrate animals. Yes? Um. In your books, you don't just make the animals like ordinary animals. If you were going to do a raccoon, let's say, which I have in Moles Hill, and you look at a raccoon, what do you think makes that raccoon look like no other animal? Isn't it and it's like a mask, right? And it's sort of like a costume also, because it's got that black on its tail. It's striped, isn't it? Yeah. So you can sort of see, this is what I look at. And then I look for things that will make you know that it's a raccoon. Lois loves all kinds of animals. She has lots of pets at home. Maybe not the kind that you think I have. For instance, this is my pet porcupine. Here's my pet goose. I think these are rainbow pets. And two more of my friends. These are sisters. Little mice. I think one is whispering in my ear. Hmm, I think they're ready to eat. I always carry peanuts in my pockets because whenever I go out, I feed the neighborhood squirrels. But one day, a squirrel decided to visit me in my apartment. I thought it was so funny, I wrote a book about it called Nuts to You. Ever since I was a child, I've been drawn to things first by their color, and then, as I get closer to the objects, I notice other details, like the texture, the way things feel. What I'm doing here is trying to capture with this rubbing the texture on this beautiful maple tree. And then what I'm going to do next is take this to my studio and paint over the top of this rubbing with the watercolors to make it look close to the colors in this tree.
It might surprise you to know that I even glued down real fabric and tree roots to make some of the artwork in red leaf, yellow leaf. I love surprises. There's something in this book I don't think you know. Now, see this page? What I did, which is really sort of sneaky, is I hit a word in the fish scales. Did you find it? What is it? Fish. Before you start laughing about this, I want to tell you, artists sometimes save things that other people throw away. So these are all my old containers. I might have got a salad in there or some, maybe some cookies. Uh, and I turned them into uh, fish aquariums. What I'm going to ask you to do is to make your own aquarium. So you can do any kind of fish you want to. If you need some uh, ideas on fish, I brought some books of photographs of fish. But on the other hand, maybe you've got an idea for a fish that nobody's ever seen. That would be good too. Can I make a starfish? Sure, I think that'd be great. It's a shark, a whale, swordfish, a funny fish, regular fish, a dogfish and a catfish. 